Hello friends and welcome to another week of Creo. Today we're going to be talking about the tabernacle. First of all, let's take a look at it with a really big tent. That's the reason why our devotional today is simply named Tent. It was portable and the point of this whole thing was that he wanted the children of Israel to bring that tent, that reminder of the Garden of Eden with them wherever they went. Now this tabernacle or this tent, it was full of imagery, really rich imagery. Again, trying to remind the children of Israel about the Eden, always trying to remember that God was the one that started this thing. So let's take a look a little bit about the tabernacle so you guys get an idea of what I'm talking about. The first thing you're going to realize about the tabernacle was that it had only one entrance. The fence outside of it that guarded the outer court was completely sealed off. Uh, you could not get underneath it, you could not climb above it, it was tall and secure enough that you could not get around it. You had to go through the east side where the gate was, the only entrance. That was a practical thing. God ordained it this way because, well, how would you like if you invited your friends over to your house and they kind of climbed through the walls or went through the windows into your house? It would be kind of annoying, right? In this outer court, they had two things. A big, big bronze uh, altar. That's where they sacrificed and burnt all the sacrifices. And a bronze laver or a sea. It basically was a really big receptacle with water. It was a process that God was ordaining in order for the for everybody to come into his presence. You couldn't just walk in. Remember, we were sealed out of there. So he was building this process to allow us to go in. The first thing that you did was to offer sacrifices. This was something called an atonement. Basically, it made you right with God under the law. This sacrifice was taking your place and it was basically experiencing what you would experience if you were to walk into the presence of God. Remember, His holiness will destroy anything that's not holy. So, in order for us not to feel that, He used animal sacrifices. The next thing you would see in the tabernacle courtyard is the bronze la laver or laver. I have to figure out how to say that. You guys can look it up. Anyways, this place was a little basin where the priests would wash their hands, the high priest would wash their hands and their feet before they went into the presence of God. This symbolizes baptism. Basically, the cleanliness idea, the purification idea was continually being put through this entire process. After this, you went inside of the tabernacle. Once you went inside of the tabernacle, the first thing you would do is go to the left. That's where the menorah or the seven uh, candle lampstand used to stand there. And this basically signified the, the tree of, in Eden, the tree of life. It also signified how God gives us illumination or a light and he's the God of all knowledge. That's the only thing that had light in the entire building. Nothing else had, there, there was no windows, there was no uh, other entrance other than the main entrance. It would be completely pitch black all the time except for the menorah that was always supposed to be lit. On the other side, there was a table, a golden table, and it had in it something called the showbread. Twelve loaves of bread that were unleavened. And this temple had these 12 loaves of bread. Each of them signified a tribe of Israel. Basically, it meant that all the tribes were equal in God's eyes. In his presence, everybody was equal. There was nobody better than the others. Last but not least, in this holy place, you would face the incense altar. And this place, just like the name says, you would burn incense, incense to God. In the morning and at noon, and I believe in the evening, there's three times that they had to burn a specific that put incense to God. And this basically signified prayers of the people. Any prayer that you were offering to God, uh, basically they would burn it before the presence of God. Behind the altar of incense, there was this big, massive curtain. Now, there's some debate whether how thick it was. Some people believe it was about a quarter of an inch thick. Some believe it may have been closer to half a foot. It depends really on who you talk to. And we know for sure that the, the, the temple one that we're going to be talking about next week was actually rather thick. Uh, but this one was not as thick as that because it had to be portable. Remember, God was making a portable garden for them. Weaved out of three different, uh, three different colors, crimson, blue, and uh, purple. It basically means the, the divinity, the holiness, and the kingship of God. Basically, it means that God was royal. And they had embroidered uh, pictures of cherubim. And nobody was supposed to cross this thing because behind this curtain was the holiest of holies. Now, when you hear something called holy of holy or king of kings, it really it was a way for them to point out that this was really, really, really important. So behind the curtain, you went into the holiest of holies. Nobody was allowed in there. There were two things inside of it. The Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat which is the lid of the of the of the ark of the covenant inside the ark was the 10 commandments Aaron's rod or his staff whatever he walked in 
and a bowl basically full of manna. Once a year on Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement, the priest would go in, the high priest would go in with a bowl of the sacrifices for the atonement or the forgiveness of sins for that year. He would bring it in and he would sprinkle it on the mercy seat or the lid of the ark. And this was a symbolic way of saying the blood has covered our sins for this year. And this was not talking about sins that you knew you committed. This was um, done because they were sometimes all of us commit sins that we don't know we have done. And in order to cover those sins, um, God provided for the children of Israel to be able to do this so that they could, in case they forgot something um, or they, they you know, didn't want to get God angry or have them uh, be punished because of something they didn't know, God provided this opportunity for them to ask for complete forgiveness of all the sins spoken and unspoken. All of this seems kind of weird and, and odd to us in our Western world, but this was something very important. The reason that God wanted this instituted and the reason that He made it uh, uh, mandatory really for the Israelites to have this because he wanted them to have an opportunity to go into his presence to humans to commune with him and this is as close as he could get without hurting him the curtain and all of the boundaries were not there to keep us away from God it was actually the other way around it was for God not to destroy us remember his, when the closer you get to the holiness of God if you're sinful the quicker you are destroyed like going towards the Sun the closer you get to the Sun the more likely you are to get burnt up so God didn't want to hurt anybody so he set up these boundaries to keep us safe humans safe so what does all this mean for us what about the tabernacle has anything to do with us so what well quite simply it's this behind me there's a plant it's it basically when the church was dedicated the building that i'm standing in front of 1956 is when it was set up and the amazing thing is that if you look at our history there's been a church in this place longer than that there's a little monument just up there which i'll take a picture of in a little while and i'll show you guys um the, i'm sure you've probably seen it or played around it or walked by it but take a time on time to read it if you get a chance uh, there's been a church in this place for almost 100 years people have worshipped god in this ground for a very long time and we're just another church that has lived in this place um, thank thank the Lord um, we are allowed to do that right now but the beautiful thing that we want to learn today is this that I could take you inside this building and as beautiful as it is and as grateful I am that we have this God does not live here he is not in this building it's just a place for us to be able to meet to talk about him God actually at this very moment is living with you in your heart in your house in your school wherever you go god it goes with you because you became his portable tabernacle the day that you decided to follow him you became his dwelling place the day that you became a christian and we're going to talk about what it means to be a temple of god next week when we gather together again awesome guys have a great week at cruise we will see you next week bye